Pinjigwe, and today is December 29th, 2010, and it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm here with Mr. Hart, and I'm going to ask him some questions about the Second World War. Where should we I'm just dropping it off. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. Let's leave it over there, please. Over here? Yeah. I'm Nathan Jigwe, and today is Wednesday, December 29th, 2010, and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm here interviewing Mr. Hart and asking him some questions about the Second World War. So, um, let's start out with, where were you on December 7th, 1941? Visiting some friends. Uh, I was going to school at the time, and I had been invited uh, uh, to visit them uh, for dinner. And uh, that actually was, I had to travel to get there, and I'd stayed overnight with these friends. And we'd gone to church and come back, just come back from church when the news came out on the radio. And how did you and your friends react to that? Well. I anticipated uh, having to eventually have military service. Mm -hmm. We both knew that the country was going to be in for some hard times. Mm -hmm. And you had grown up during the Great Depression. What, what was I that? had, yes. Hmm? Can you describe that for me? What, that well, I was relatively young. I mean, I was 10 in 1923, 1933. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, one doesn't have too much of an impression at age 10, mm -hmm. 1933, which, which is really the bottom of the Depression. Okay. And what did your parents do during the Depression? My father had died in 1930, but my mother had to bring up four children all by herself. Okay. And did you have many, did you have four siblings, or two brothers? I didn't hear you. What, what were your siblings, like how old were they? I was the oldest oh. of four. I had a sister and two other brothers. And um, <clears throat> after you heard the news, is that when you decided to join the service, or was that on your no, own? No. Uh, by that time, I was already 18. Mm -hmm. I had uh, registered for the draft, as was expected. Mm -hmm. I was going to school where they had ROTC. Have you heard of ROTC? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I was signed up. One has to be signed up for the first two years when one goes to an ROTC school. And uh, I was signed up. Hence, I was not probably called up by the draft board for that reason. Mm -hmm. So for the next two years, I was in the ROTC program. Yeah. And where did you study? You said MIT, right? MIT, yes. Mm -hmm. And for what major? Mm -hmm. What major was it? Chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And um, what did the ROTC program entail exactly? What kind of training? Well, what's a week? military drill. Apart from that, it was just uh, lectures on military uh, activities. I honestly don't remember them. <laughs> too far, too long ago. So there wasn't a lot of additional requirement? No, no. And because of the ROTC program, you were admitted to officer training school, or how did that work? Uh, that is the concept. Strangely enough, the officers who were running the ROTC program persuaded roughly 80% of my group to join the enlisted reserve during our second year of college. And lo and behold, the government decided in all their wisdom to call us up at the end of the second year. So we were all told we were through school for a while and uh, to report uh, to a camp in military service. So you didn't really even get to finish your four years for right. a bachelor's? That's right. Yeah. And so, um, after your two years were up with the ROTC program, did you, were you immediately shipped to Europe? Or? No, no. We went to basic training. We really started at the beginning. Yeah. We are just, essentially, we were, we were recruits. Although we were put into a program, we ended up being a little bit special after the, after the basic training. Yeah. And so, because of the ROTC, were you 
a little bit um, better off than some of the others who have been drafted? Probably out. so, but I opted for something else. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to uh, do a little bit more than just be a, a soldier. Mm -hmm. So I was possible to join the Air Force. At that time, the Air Force was a part of the Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked to be transferred. I, after basic, I had to wait around a few months. And I was sent to a pre basic uh, part of the Air Force. I wanted to be a navigator. Mm -hmm. So, why, why is that? Why did you feel that you wanted to be a navigator? I felt there was more to it, a little more than that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, did, where did you complete your United States training? Didn't quite, oh. because again, in all their wisdom, I stayed for about eight months in the Air Force mm -hmm. at uh, what they call pre-pre-flight. I was actually at the uh, uh, Butler University in Indianapolis in school. Mm -hmm. There was a large number of the recruits that were coming into the Air Force had no college training and they wanted to. It was you know, the rudiments of, of college education. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that period though, instead of going on to extended Air Force training, the government sent back all of the people who had been in the, air, in the Army, sent, them, sent us back. And I was sent back to a newly formed infantry division um, to start training all over again. And what division was that? Hmm? Do, you, do you recall what The 86th was? Infantry Division. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where did you complete your training for that? Uh, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And how long was it before you were called to fight? Quite a while, because uh, they ended up sending us over to California as a group to get amphibious training. Mm -hmm. now, let's see, this would have been in 1944. And if you're familiar with the history of the war in Europe, you may recall that uh, the Battle of the Bulge occurred in December of 44. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the government, in all their wisdom, decided they needed a brand new infantry division. And they rushed us to the East Coast, put us on board ship, and by February we were in Europe. By that time, the Battle of the Bulge, of course, was history, mm -hmm. and they didn't need us. As a division, though, we actually did cover the, the territory of Germany from uh, the Rhine to the Austrian border. So sort of like a mop up, uh, that would throw very little of the war, though. Um, okay. Did you come, did you land at Normandy and then you proceeded on? We landed at La Havre. At where? La Havre. La Havre. It's a port in France. Mm -hmm. By that time, the war was at the Rhine. Mm -hmm. France had been. Uh, I mean, you know, and have been liberated, yeah. yeah. And so, by the time you got to Germany, you didn't really have a lot of combat action. No. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in Europe for in Germany? We stayed about a month, and then they sent, again, the, because the war was still on in Asia, mm -hmm. they sent the whole division back to the United States as a, against a fresh division, anticipating shipping us out to, to the uh, Pacific. Uh, we had a very nice uh, two-week furlough, and uh, after that uh, we regrouped out in California, and uh, there was the war in Asia finally was over in August of 45, and uh, lo and behold, we were sailing out underneath the Golden Gate Bridge as a unit on DJ Day. So, my experiences in World War II were as benign as one can expect. Uh, really very easy. I was lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you actually get to the Pacific, to any yeah, islands? Yeah, the they uh, were, uh, sent us out to the Philippines as an occupation troop. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was after the bombs had been dropped at Hiroshima yeah. and Nagasaki? Where, where, do you remember where you were on those two days? In California. Mm -hmm. I, I can't recall for sure. Did, how did you hear the news of that? Well, I think we all were very, very glad that something as dramatic as this uh, was used to end the war, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you agreed with it? 
Hmm? So you agreed with it because it kept you... I don't think uh, that thought uh, was a part of our makeup. Mm -hmm. Agree or disagree, it happened. Right. Yeah. And so once you got to the Philippines, what did you do there? It's a, we're simply an occupation force. Mm -hmm. uh, our unit actually had did have a specific job. There was a gasoline pipeline. <laughs> the main air base was called Clark Field. It was north of Manila, about uh, 30 to 40 miles. And they had a gas pipeline from Manila Bay up to Clark Field to supply their uh, fuel needs. And uh, because there still were uh, some forces uh, who were not happy with the uh, result of the war, they were uh, hitting it occasionally on the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And we had to guard the pipeline. Okay. Very simple job, though. Yeah. And when, when you were back in Europe, what, what was your job there at, in the infantry itself? I was a uh, mortar gunner. And what did that entail? It carried a, a portable mortar and the ammunition for it. Oh, okay. And we only had one occasion to use it, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> when was that? I know? can't say. I can't recall. Um, was it, it was during, during, during that period from oh. April 1st to uh, early May when you were in oh, boy, but yeah, when we crossed uh, Germany. And um, once you got to the Philippines, how long were you stationed there? We got there in September of 45, and I returned in March of 46. I was discharged. And you didn't reapply for a second? No. no. And you went, did you go immediately back to MIT to finish your school? The following term, yes. And that was March. I had to wait till September. <laughs> but I did return to school, yeah. And did you, you stayed there for another two years yeah. and finished your bachelor's? And did you pursue a master's degree in chemical engineering? I looked for a job after mm -hmm. I got my bachelor's. Yeah. That's why I'm here in Glens Falls. As a matter of fact, I went to work for a company here in Glens Falls. What company was that? Imperial Color and Wallpaper Division. And what did you do there? I was a chemical engineer. Yeah. Okay. And how long were you with that company for? For the rest of my service. Oh. Four years. Oh. And did you have a family? Yeah. I have six children. Oh. They were all born here okay. and they all graduated from Glens Falls High School. And not a single one of them lives anywhere nearby. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, when you signed up for the ROTC program, how did your family feel about that? That was a prerequisite for going to MIT. Oh, it was? Yeah. Wow. Um, so they supported you when, in that decision to go to MIT with knowing that you would probably have to go off Well, it was really uh, quite a uh, privilege to go to MIT. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, do you think that the Army and your time in the service helped to prepare you for your career, or...? Not really, no. No, not really. Because I never got above the rank of PFC. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, because you were in the ROTC, that didn't, um, it didn't help with your uh, rank at all? No. Uh, um, it might have if I had stayed with the program that they had envisioned, because uh, most of those people who accepted it went into what they call the Army Specialized Training Program. Mm -hmm. And many of them ended up with, pro probably not too many of them ended up as officers, but they ended up with high-ranking non-com jobs in different branches of the uh, service mm -hmm. that did not require an awful lot of uh, combat duty. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any like fond memories when you were in Europe or in the Pacific, in the Philippines? Do you have any funny stories to share? Not really, because uh, you really... Well, <laughs> in one sense, yes, I can recall. Uh, I actually was asked to do some teaching. Uh, my uh, MIT background was sufficient to be accepted as a, an instructor for uh, uh, a math course. I did that for a while. In the Philippines? Yeah. Because the 
people who were running the show uh, wanted the, you know, the men to be occupied, and that was one of the things that they started schools where people could do a little learning, anticipation of getting back home. I did have a chance to play uh, Duplicate Bridge, and uh, another fellow and myself won the tournament. Yeah. So I have a very fond memory there. Yeah. Do you, um, did you have other friends from MIT who were in the ROT sort of program with you? Or? Oh yeah, the, it was essentially the whole class. Uh -huh. And I say 80% of them were persuaded to join the enlisted reserve, mm -hmm. all of which all of, all of whom were soon called up at the end of the term. Were the majority of those men in your um, division? Or? No, you see, I went into the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I was the only one in the group that did that. Um, so so I, I lost track, of, completely lost track of that. Yeah. So you separated while everyone else went off. Yeah. But it really didn't do any good anyway. So. Um, do you remember anything um, in particular when you were, that one time you were in, Combat? Anything that comes to mind? No, we just marched. Marched. Mm -hmm. Um, how was the food at the camps? I have no fond memories, believe me. Mm -hmm. We accepted what there was. Well, I suspect, though, that uh, this, the military had uh, really good food, more so than many of the civilians. And, yeah, from what I've heard of the uh, rationing. Yeah. Um, when you were in the Philippines, and um, were you like building houses as well? Were you working yeah. closely with like the Marines? We were just big, big rent in a special place that would accommodate us. Yeah. Yeah. So there weren't like, um, the CBs weren't there with like another division? From the yeah, it was just an infantry division. Yeah. All, we were, all we were capable of is Fighting a war, which was over. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, when do you ever regret that um, you weren't able to join the Air Force and become a navigator like you wanted? Yeah, I think I I do to a certain extent. Yes, I would like to have uh, had that experience, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, I actually I did uh, one small. Fascinating, our happy part uh, of that short time in the Air Force, I got to have 10 hours of dual instruction in the Piper Co. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you think that if you had, if you had been able to stay with the Air Force, do you think that would have changed your um, your combat at all? Do you think you would have done more active mm -hmm. in combat? I know what you're speculating. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did you get married when the war was over or during um, your leave? A few years later. Yeah. And you, right here in, in Glens Falls? Hmm? Right here in Glens Falls? No, the lady I married came from Boston, oh. where I met her when I was going to school. And where were, where were you from originally down near Poughkeepsie? I grew up in Elster County. And whereabouts is that near Poughkeepsie? Ellen. Ellen. You know where Ellenville is? No. You know where Newburgh is? No. You know where Kingston is? Yes, that's okay. It's south of Kingston, okay, south. away from the river. Okay. And did you were your parents from there too? Lived there for most of your childhood? No, we're originally from Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. I was born in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And how long did you live in Brooklyn for? Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. yeah. My my mother's family was was in Brooklyn uh, after we moved out. And we we moved up uh, to Allenville because. Uh, it was less expensive living. Mm -hmm. right in That's the a good workout, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was very desirable. Tiring, but you feel oh, better. And, uh, really, yeah. Living in the country. I like that aspect of it. What did your mother do during the Depression to support you and your brothers? Well, she has family help mm -hmm. for quite a bit. And then later, later she went to work as a, as a secretary. Did you use your... Um, your reparations from the service, did you send them like home in order to support you? Didn't have that much. Didn't have that much. No. <laughs> BFC did not get much for her, very much for me. Yeah. And did you meet your wife? You said she was from Boston. Did you meet her while you were at MIT? Yeah. Okay. Um, what, <clears throat> when, do you recall when FDR died? Not. Uh, no, not as a missive, no. 
I'm, I'm sure at the time uh, we talked about it, but no, I really don't remember that. the occasion now. Um, seeing as how you weren't in direct combat with the Japanese, um, do you have any hostilities towards them today, or? I don't think so, no. Or the Germans in particular? No. 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 In fact, here in Glens Falls, we had a neighbor uh, who was a few years younger than me. Uh, he was, he grew up in wartime Germany, mm -hmm. and he and his wife both, uh, and uh, he was in the youth corps because of the fact that he was so, so old. At, at a certain age, they were automatically recruited, mm -hmm. and uh, he never saw any combat. He wasn't old enough for that, and he actually worked as an interpreter. He was he had good English command, and um, before again finishing school over there and then coming over here, he worked here at GE in Hudson Falls. He was a neighbor, was a neighbor of mine here, and we were very good neighbors. Okay. Um, well, that's all the questions I really have for you. Um, I'd like to thank you, and I have a release form for you to sign. Sure. I'm uh, sorry to, if I disappoint you in any way, but uh, mm -hmm. it's fate that maybe why I'm here now. The fact that uh, I had an easy, easy go. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's for the better anyway. Yeah. Do you think maybe because you spent those two years at MIT with the ROTC program, do you think that that helped you to be better off? No, I have no local military. Uh -huh. no. Oh, that's interesting. I, I would not have planned to go on to be an officer. Mm -hmm. Had I finished the second year, no, I would not have. So you really had no intention originally on no. joining the army? It was a prerequisite to go to school. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to go there more than anything? No. What were your other choices for schools that you could have gone to and not had to face that? You know, surprisingly enough, that was my first choice and I got it right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you had to Today it would have been difficult because it was a lot easier to get in than, than today. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, at that time, I have to say 50% of the students mm. at that school were local. Uh, today, probably 90% of them are international. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's changed for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. I think the, the crew is going to sleep over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right here? Yes.